from six. Enjoy your weekend. Back to you both. Oh, Matt, thanks very much. And yes, good luck to everyone with the um, London Marathon. Exactly. Do you remember last year? It was so hot. People really, It was the really hottest struggled. one on record last was year. It? So uh, there's far, far better conditions, I think, for many of you to run it. Good I luck to all so. of you. Have, you. have you done a marathon in your... Uh, did a half marathon, did the Great North Run. Got to the end of that and said, I'm never doing a marathon. Yeah. <laughs> it's too tough, so... Yeah, tough. Kudos good to luck. you all. You're all superstars. <laughs> Matt, thanks very much. Enjoy your weekend. Thanks, right, Matt. Let's see. The time now is 8.53. We're going to meet uh, a remarkable woman now who has lived nothing short of an amazing life. Her name is Dieter Krauss. Now, at the age of 14, Dieter was imprisoned at the death camps of Auschwitz. Whilst there, she hid a small collection of books, keeping them safe for prisoners to read, because anyone then found in possession of a book would have been killed. Dieter's powerful testimony as the keeper of books has been inspiring a best-selling novel, the librarian of Auschwitz, and I'm very pleased to say Dieter is with us this morning. Very Hi. good morning to you, morning. Dieter. This is a, a truly remarkable story. I wonder if you could start from the point when you are in Auschwitz and explain to people who don't understand this library that you kept. Just tell us a little bit about the small number of books and why they mattered so much in that terrible place. I was a girl of 14 and a half, having spent another year before Auschwitz in Ghetto Theresienstadt. And I was transported with my parents and, the, and another 2,500 2, people in a cattle train to Auschwitz. We were separated, men and women, but in the same camp, and it was called a family camp. And there were only Jews who had been shipped from Theresienstadt to Auschwitz, not mixed with other prisoners. There were men, women, and children. One of the uh, prisoners was a former uh, German Jew from uh, who had uh, emigrated before bef from Hitler to Germ to Prague, and he was a uh, sports teacher and uh, a very charismatic person. He had uh, he got permission from uh, from the commander of Auschwitz from uh, of the command of the family camp which was called B2B, the Germans called it that, uh, to establish a daycare for the children so that they don't disturb, uh, he, he gave it as a reason not to disturb the adults while they work. And we were allowed to spend the day from morning after morning call until late afternoon in this one barrack. Children were considered till age 14. I was already 14 and a half. And he got, uh, his idea was to employ children from age 14 to 16 as helpers in this daycare place. It was a barrack without windows, without a floor, only earthen floor, and no bunks and no furniture, just little stools. Magically, they, uh, there were a few books in that in building. They were uh, collected from the luggage of the arriving people and smuggled into our compound. There were maybe 12 or 14 books, no more. And they were not really books to read. There was several, um, there was a, a, a Russian grammar, there was an atlas, there was a, a a Freud book about dreams, but some of the books were, were uh, also suitable to, to use for children, and I became responsible. I became the librarian. I was given the, the job to keep the books. They, was, they stood on a, on a little board in front of me, like this, and, uh, and the, 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 the adults who worked with the children would borrow them, and I was responsible so they came back. Dita, it's very important that we hear stories like yours. And in the book, 
Do you think that's a good account of your time in the camp and moving on to meet your husband and establish some wonderful friendships too? Yes. Well, I said I was 14 and a half, so not yet um, considered as girlfriend. But I knew him. He he was one of the of the uh, um, counselors of the teachers of a group of children, the twelve years olds, and his group sat very near me all day long. I could watch him. We uh, we didn't exchange a word. I, I I don't think he looked at me, but I met him after the war, and then he did recognize me in Prague when we met after the liberation. We met by chance, and whenever we met someone who survived, we were happy and said, "I'm glad you survived." And where are you going now? I'm going to the Jewish community to ask for an orphan's uh, pension. Oh, I'm coming with you. And then we started our friendship. <laughs> and Dito, you, you explained about the library that you were responsible for keeping secret from the guards. Yes. That came, uh, and we have to explain this, at huge risk because they would kill they would kill those who were in possession of books and you were responsible for hiding those and keeping them secret. As a matter of fact, I wasn't aware of that. I wasn't aware of that, that I, that I would be killed if, if the books were discovered. Um, part of what uh, the, the author describes comes uh, from his uh, imagination. Uh, we, uh, there were hardly any controls on the children's block, very rarely. So there was actually not, no situation where I, I felt this danger. How do you tell your children and your grandchildren about your life? your experiences? Uh, the problem with this is the language. I emigrated to Israel aged 20. The Israeli children don't like, uh, didn't like to learn e English, so my sons didn't read uh, the book and my grandson, one of them did, and the other said it's too difficult in English, and it's... Uh... <laughs> so it, they know f from me, but not from the book. They know about what I went through and what I, their grandfather went through. They do. Why do you think you survived? Why did you survive? It's only luck, only luck. Uh, maybe it helped that I had this idea during the selection when Dr. Mengele, who was uh, responsible for deciding who goes to work in Germany, who was sent from the Auschwitz to Germany to work, and who was designed for the gas chambers. We had to strip. We were standing in front of him, uh, filing in front of him and having to say three words. Our tattooed number, we have a tattooed number on the left arm, each of us, we didn't have a name. Our number, our age and our profession. Most, most uh, people say prof profession that uh, they believed would be useful for the Germans. And I said I, my age, I, I uh, pretended to be 16, I was 15, my age, my, 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 my number, ma, a painter, Malerin in German. And he stopped, he, he stopped the, 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 the people from uh, progressing and said, uh, do you paint uh, portraits or do you, are you a, a house painter? I said, portraits. And he continued, can you paint my portrait? And I was terribly scared. But I said, yes, 
they sent me to the people who were chosen for work. So maybe that was a reason that I was chosen, because we were all very thin and very hungry. Um, a, how, how, do you, how have you settled, in any sense, the events that you witnessed? How, how have you managed to place that in any way now as you look back? It is the, the, the key event of, of, of my life. It is still the most uh, profound experience which I, uh, is with me all the time. It is with me all the time. I, I, my life took a break and re be, began again after another life quite another life after, after Auschwitz. Has your love of books remained? Yes. Because that, um, I mean, if anything in the book, in amongst some terrible things, the shining light that a book can have yes. for a, chi you know, a child in your case, that really and comes I, through. I still read a lot and I love, and I love, uh, I studied English literature and my husband was a writer. So I helped him. I, I, I uh, uh, typed all his uh, manuscripts. So I, I was very involved in, in, in books all the time. It has been a privilege to talk to you today. Thank you. I know you made the journey specially to come to talk to us today. So thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, the book, The Librarian of Auschwitz, is out now, and it is an extraordinary story. Dieter Krause's story. Um, four, four minutes past nine is the time. Find out what's happening, uh, where you are this morning. Brief look, we'll be back with you in a couple of minutes. Hello, good morning to you. Wildfires in Scotland are to be tackled by controlled burning for the first time. Their increased threat has forced the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service to begin training staff.